Welcome to the Creative Me podcast, coming to you from Guernsey in the Channel Islands. Hello and welcome to episode 20 of the Creative Me podcast. Thank you for joining me. Today's show is all about how a podcast episode is made. This show is ideal for anyone interested in getting into podcasting, but also anyone who's curious about what has to happen in order for an episode to go live. It's a sneaky peek behind the scenes, I think. Bear in mind that other podcasters will have an entirely different workflow to me. But that being said, today I want to share my workflow with you. I hope you find it interesting. Every episode starts with an outline. I tend to start my basic outline in Workflowy and then move into Google Docs when it's time to start putting a bit more meat on the bones. When the outline is in place, I gather my recording tools. These are a microphone. I use a Blue Yeti with a pop shield. A pop shield is a plastic circle with a sort of mesh over the front of it, which helps minimise the popping sounds you get when you pronounce words beginning with P and B. You can pick a pop shield up from Amazon for less than £10 sterling. I'll make sure there's links to everything I mention in the show notes for you, by the way. I record podcast episodes in GarageBand. I think these days GarageBand comes free Uh, with Max, but I'm not sure. I will check and ensure it's in the show notes. I also have a pair of headphones for listening back to my audio to make sure it sounds okay. And these are made by Studio Spares and the model is M1000. I'll then record the audio in GarageBand referring to my outline on my iPad. I listen through to the audio in GarageBand and edit as needed. I'm specifically listening to breaks in the audio because in order to pause, I hit the space bar and that tends to make a kind of popping sound, which isn't very pleasant to listen to. So I listen to the breaks in the audio and I edit anything necessary. After that, I download the audio as an MP3 and I name the file consistently. All of my files are named episode-number.mp3. This consistency is really helpful when searching for files, for example. I also listen to the MP3 just to make sure that everything has downloaded correctly. This whole process would take me, on average, I'd say half an hour to three quarters of an hour. So that's the outlining, gathering the tools, getting set up and recording and editing the audio. And that's based on roughly 15 minutes of audio. After that, it's time to make a start on the show notes and accompanying images. Your show notes are an expanded version of the outline. They're not a transcription as such. I am trying to create show notes that if, for example, someone didn't listen to the audio, they could understand the show notes. So they sound, or rather they read, a bit more like a blog post. My show notes include a one-sentence summary. I also include subheadings, and these are formatted H1, which is good for SEO. I also add hyperlinks. And once I have drafted and proofread the podcast post, or the show notes in other words, I will then 
transfer them across to WordPress, my blogging platform of choice, using a tool called Wordable. Up until recently, Wordable was called Postable, and it's a one-click solution to drafting blog posts. You can create them in Google Docs and then, with one click, send them across to WordPress. This works with WordPress.org. I don't think it works with WordPress.com, but I'd need to check that. Next up, it's time to create images. For the show notes, I create my images using Canva. I previously used Photoshop, but Canva is web-based and so easy to use. It has templates at the correct sizes for social media imagery. So I highly recommend it, canva.com. I create four images, one for Pinterest, one for Instagram, a Twitter image and a Facebook image. The Facebook image is also suitable for Google+. The dimensions of these images will be in the show notes over at martinellis.com. Next, I have to do something with my MP3 file. If you're thinking about creating a podcast, you need somewhere to host your files. You need somewhere for your audio files to live so that people can listen to them and download them. If you are, for example, a WordPress.org user, you will already have a hosting solution um, because it's a self-hosted blogging platform. However, it's not necessarily a good idea to host your audio files in the same place as your website. I'll try and find some articles elaborating on this further for the show notes. I host my audio files with Libsyn. They're a fantastic company. They All they do is podcast hosting. They are absolutely considered to be experts in this field. So the next stage in my workflow is to up, upload the audio file to Libsyn. I'll also upload the square image I created for Instagram because Libsyn has a spot for a thumbnail image and the sizes work okay. I'll copy the show notes from WordPress across to Libsyn. I will set the show to clean as opposed to, uh, well, not clean. (laughs) Clean as in no swear words. And then I'll hit publish. Once the show has published on Libsyn, I copy and paste the audio player from Libsyn to paste into WordPress. I use the custom audio player because I rather like the look of it. And you have the opportunity to change an accent colour. I changed this to black so it fits in with the rest of my website. Once I'm back in WordPress, it's time to perform some checks on the blog post in which my podcast is. I use a fantastic plugin for search engine optimization called Yoast. And through that plugin, I'm able to check the readability and the search engine optimization of the show notes. I also use a plugin called Better Click to Tweet. So using this enables me to create a little box that has a click to tweet message in the show notes. So it'll say something like, Click here to listen to Martine's latest podcast episode. This just allows social sharing to take place really easily. In WordPress, I add a feature image, which is, again, the square Instagram image I created. I pop the Pinterest image to the very bottom of the show notes, centred, and then I hit publish. After publishing, I like to create a redirect URL to make referring to the location of the podcast episode easy. So, for example, for this episode, you can find the podcast at martinellis.com forward slash 20, as in the digits two zero. I do this using the plugin called Redirection. After that, it's time for social sharing. And at the time of writing, I'm using Buffer. I have been trying out CoSchedule and I'll be in a position to feedback on that soon, but For now, uh, Buffer is my tool of choice. I share to Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Twitter and Instagram pretty much in the same fashion, although for Twitter I use the Buffer Power Scheduler, um, allowing Buffer to pick the times. That's my podcast workflow. It's quite a bit of work, isn't it, and quite a lot to take in. To make life as easy as possible for you, I've actually created a Google Doc outlining this whole podcast workflow. So if you're a wannabe podcaster or someone who or someone who already has a podcast and would like to review their own workflow and perhaps introduce some new elements, I'll ensure 
that the workflow download is available for you in the show notes. That's it for me on podcasty stuff. Before I go, don't forget to check out my new book club, martinellis.com forward slash book hyphen club. It would be great if you would like to join us. That's it from me. I hope you'll tune in next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>